I'm back to testing one of the most powerful and power-hungry VR headsets that currently exist in the consumer market, Biomix Crystal. And since I made my initial review, there has been a couple of weeks already, and I told you that this unit keeps receiving updates. This is not a final unit, and I'm really looking forward to see how much has changed and whether the setup process for Biomix Crystal has become more user-friendly. I will show you right here from the beginning to to finish how to set up Pimax Crystal, what my experiences are with it, and whether I can set it up to run Microsoft Flight Simulator on my 3080 graphics card. Pimax has since created several walkthroughs and tutorials, which is really good to see. It's desperately needed for a complicated headset like Crystal, so I'm going to follow them and see if they are going to help me get the best results. You can see that my headset is already prepared. I have the battery plugged in here you need to have it even if you use it in a PC VR mode because that's the requirement of the Qualcomm XR2 chip. I will also go ahead and connect this display port and two USB cables for power. Previously performance was sort of inconsistent. Sometimes it would connect to my PC, sometimes it wouldn't and normally I use a DP repeater but uh, let's try and connect it without the DP repeater first and see if it's going to work. You'll need to install the Pimax client which I already have on my PC. You will see on the screen whether it will connect the moment that I plug this into my computer. This USB cables actually give power to my hats so I'm going to turn this on and the next step will be to connect it to uh, the display port. So yeah the display port still shows that it's not recognized. Even though it is connected to my computer it doesn't seem like my computer wants to recognize it. Let me try a different display port. Three display ports on my computer and only one of them actually worked um, to connect Pimax Crystal to my computer. Oh, and then immediately I see this Pimax VR experience. That is something that I see in VR. All right, so my headset is connected. That was pretty sweet. And now the controllers. As long as the headset sees the controllers, they are visible too. Okay, cool. So it did connect even though only one of my display ports worked for this. Recently, Pimax did something very admirable and very needed for their headset, and that is they created this open XR guide for Pimax Crystal. Essentially, to unlock the full power of this headset, you will need to use open XR tools that will help you optimize this headset to your computer's performance. Again, I am testing this on 3080, not 3090 Ti and not uh, 4090 because I believe that 3080 is the kind of a graphics card that more users will have that still a lot of users can use for VR gaming because it is more affordable. Not everybody can uh, afford a 4090. So I wanna see what kind of performance I can squeeze out of this graphics card uh, when using Pimax Crystal. And essentially there are four tools that they are telling us that we need to use. The Pimax client that we already have and three more. Um, open Composite, Open XR Toolkit, and Pimax XR Control Tool. There are links on this website. I will link it in the description. Pimax is the one you can get from their website. When we open Pimax Client, one of the first thing here, render quality to one. I think it's very important to select a fixed foveated rendering. Right now, dynamic foveated rendering is not available on Crystal because they're still figuring out their eye tracking, but there is fixed foveated rendering that still can improve your performance. I chose balanced. We'll see how that is going to work for me. And in fact, I even heard that render quality can be less than one, like 0.75. And you will also need to deselect smart smoothing and hidden areas mask. Either way, I'm going to apply both of these changes. So the first one is the Pimax XR runtime. Huge shout out to Matthew, by the way, for creating this open XR. Without it, uh, it would be so much harder, I guess, to use this headset and many other headsets. I already have all of them downloaded on my computer <laughs> and installed. I will start Pimax XR runtime. It is important here to select Pimax XR as opposed to Steam VR. I have 90 Hertz set right now at the Pimax client and I'm not sure if I, I should keep it to 90. I really want to try 120 and uh, that that would just look so much nicer here. So I changed it to 120 and we'll see 
uh, if this is going to actually work. So if it doesn't work for some reason, I will change it back to 90 hertz. The next one is OpenXR Toolkit, and that is something that we will need to do inside VR. But first, we need to make sure that it is on your computer. This is going to op uh, help you open a special window inside VR that will allow you to enable something called a turbo mode, and that will dramatically increase the frames per second uh, of your game, specifically Microsoft Flight Simulator. So what I set here is the buttons that will help me operate that window inside VR. That's pretty much it here. And the last one is Open Composite or Open uh, VR. All I need to click is switch to Open Composite. So I'll switch it. Okay. And now it's switched. And now it says games like Microsoft Flight Simulator are ready to use out of the box for Crystal and also 8KX if you have that headset. That's very optimistic and hopefully that is going to work but we're not done setting up yet it says you can open dcs world or microsoft flight simulator from steam but don't use steam vr so do not start steam vr i know that is counterintuitive i will run microsoft flight simulator from steam but i will not run steam vr while this is connected i will then turn on the vr mode in the game so that way i will use this open xr setting and not steam vr all right after a gigantic update that i had to wait for so long to install i finally ran microsoft flight simulator right here 108 frames per second that is extremely high again 3080 is a great graphics card if you want to play it on a flat screen but this headset is so much more power hungry that you will need to lower your uh settings here switch to vr we are going to change it to medium settings and we'll see how it performs control s the open xr toolkit opens up and here i can change this settings fixed foveated rendering again this is i think very important and the turbo mode will need to be on upscaling sharpening to nis and we will see how that is going to look and you can see that it already increased the frames per second rate over 60. i am really excited to see what is going to to look like when i actually start the game okay oh oh goodness so what i see right now is i um i see the edges of the screen whenever I'm, I'm looking right or left quickly i can see the edges so it's not running very smoothly for me here i am in the cockpit that does look so pretty but i don't like the fact that it, it still looks a bit jittery and i can see the edges of the screen if i move my head so it just doesn't look very smooth it looks like the settings that i have right now are higher than my computer can handle as you can see my gpu is running at a hundred percent and i'm running at medium settings and i've set all the open xr settings that they have asked me to it does look pretty if i didn't move my head at all that looks phenomenal but the problem is you want to enjoy it all right you want to be immersed in it so let's see what else we can do set device to 90 hertz and you can see that there's nothing that loads my gpu right now there's no games i it's a freshly restarted computer so it's um uh, it's my gaming pc right i don't even edit videos here it doesn't have premiere pro or any editing tools all it has is games yeah i will be honest i do not see the difference since i changed the the refresh rate so refresh rate did not work either all looks super clear i can read everything pretty much everything here on the dashboard looks amazing that is so cool though <laughs> that is very cool oh my god but i haven't solved my, pro my problem yet i haven't solved it i'm running at 30 frames per second maybe 39 okay oh 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 no 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 <laughs> oh god i got distracted hold on i can try lower the quality all the way to low from medium to low under global rendering quality we will change that to low and apply and save running at 58 frames per second wow that is so cool that 
I can see all those scratches on the on the window. That's amazing. I don't see any artifacts and I don't see the edges of the screen. And GPU is still overclocking at 100%. The thing is, if you have such a powerful headset like Pimax Crystal, then even on low settings, you will get pretty amazing visuals. Like this is very clear, but I can see stuff loading as I'm flying closer to it. And that is of course, because this is low settings. So this does not look nearly as good as this headset is capable of. Change graphics to medium. See the edges of the screen if I move my head a little bit too fast. It does look choppier. So I know that I said at the beginning that I wanted to only use the settings that were provided to me in that OpenXR guide. I decided to go a different direction and get their recommendation elsewhere. There is a way to override the resolution of the game inside VR using OpenXR setting. And that is exactly what I'm going to do right now. If I open this OpenXR toolkit and go to systems, override resolution, yes, and display resolution per eye is much higher than it probably should be. So I lowered it all the way down to the final one uh, right now. The way I, the, the one that I have is 2685 by 3883. I need to restart the VR session for this to take effect. So right now, I still see a not so smooth jittery performance. So this is the flat screen again and the moment of truth back to VR. Oh. What? That was it? Guys. It freaking worked. It is butter smooth. <laughs> I can I'm gonna cry honestly I'm gonna cry right now I finally have this amazing performance <laughs> holy moly why why didn't they include this in the freaking manual that's what did the trick this is unbelievable hold on now what about what about my GPU? Well, GPU is still running at 100%. Still pretty demanding on my GPU, but it is smooth, I'm telling you. And it is so clear. Frames per second, which by the way, we're getting 50 60. I am playing on 60 frames per second right now. This is the dream. I absolutely cannot believe it. We did it. All that was not for nothing. We managed to get, whoa. Oh my God. We managed to get amazing graphics, which by the way, it does look amazing on medium. If you have 3080, you can totally run this thing on medium and you probably would be able to like play around with some of the other features like visibility. So if you have 3080, you can absolutely use all of these tools that I showed you in this video. It is just so amazing. Holy moly. I am so happy that this finally happened. To end this video, I want to reiterate that this is still a work in progress. The bugs are still being fixed. The performance issues are still being addressed. I am not a fan of having so many OpenXR tools required to run this game, but it's good that there is a way, especially when you have a, a not the strongest GPU, to enjoy your time in this gorgeous game with this mind-blowing graphics. At the end, I finally managed to get the maximum quality that I could squeeze out of 3080. I managed to make it run smoothly. I managed to make it work at my medium settings, even though um, my GPU was still overclocking and somehow the game still managed to run very smoothly regardless of that. And that made me very happy, as you could see in the video. At the same time, it was utterly unclear that that setting was even needed um, for a smooth performance. It was not mentioned anywhere. 
in the tutorial, in that guide. As you can see, it was not a straightforward process for me. It took quite a bit of time to set up the OpenXR tools. If you're using it for the first time, you will need to understand how to use all these tools and what each of them does so that you can actually use them for improving your performance. So the guide from Pimax was a step in the right direction, but it looks like it's still not the most comprehensive guide. For example, I did not find a way that the uh, refresh rate would affect or not affect the performance. There's absolutely no mentioning of the overriding of the resolution. It's a good start, but it is not yet the handbook that new Pimax users need, at least when it comes to Flight Simulator, because that is one of the most complicated games to set up. Perhaps this is what they will do, because it is still a work in progress. And uh, perhaps after we have the final product, they will then come up with a system that would help users navigate all the settings in this headset depending on the hardware that they have in their PC. There is progress compared to the review that I made previously. It's good to see things change for the best, although there is still room for growth. I will continue uh, using this headset. I will continue testing it because they are not done uh, releasing updates to the firmware. So there are still things that I can check out. And I would like you to tell me what else you would like to know about this headset, what other apps you would like me to try. And uh, I will make sure to make those videos next. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time.